just yesterday, a friend of mine from California was visiting, and we were driving around uh, DC area, uh, it, it, some of the suburbs here, and and we had a purpose. We weren't just driving around looking for signs of the times, but. As you may have noticed on a recent South Park episode, the people on the street corners saying with uh, you know flipping signs that say "cash for gold" seem to be everywhere these days. It is a sign of the times, of the devaluing of the dollar, that people are figuring this out and anticipating it, and the market for gold is heating up. But more importantly, we're seeing unemployment out of control. I think. A lot of that due to people working under the table, off the record, jobs where they don't have to pay taxes because the taxes have become so onerous. But I really just, I got the feel, palpable feeling yesterday, seeing the contrast between what we're capable of technologically, what we're capable of in terms of organizing labor and capital and resources to meet human needs, to conduct research and development, to do innovation, to move the species forward, to improve quality of life for ourselves and our children, to create a world that they will inherit. That, well, unfortunately, it looks increasingly like the fall of the Roman Empire. And I know it's a cliche. It's been said before a million times. But I'm feeling it now. I don't know. I don't, it's just... And I feel it not just in the economic struggles that America is facing, because those are really a a symptom. But one of the symptoms that follows from that is a certain desperation and a certain survivalism is sinking in. Where you see crimes like what we saw in Spring, Texas, uh, the, the baby theft and murder. But at the same time, you see people desperately turning to government, to this organized gang of criminals, this group of thugs, not to make things better, but to project their insecurities on others, to not say, don't steal from me, Mr. IRS agent, steal from everybody else equally. And by equally, I mean my own vision of equally based on what I think they should pay, based on how much money they're making, not based on any objective standard of fairness or anything like that. But there's there's a, I mean, obviously with unemployment going up predictably, there's uh, crime is increasing nationally and the desperation is there. And I'm scared. I, I mean, I, I don't mean to say that I'm scared because I don't want that to be the message of this show because... I'm a long-term optimist, and I think it's good to look forward to that. But what I'm scared of, I mean, like I, I don't want to say I'm scared to leave my apartment, but I'm scared that the incentives are so drastically changing that the, the fall of the empire is going to be accelerated by our increasing isolation and what is made possible by this unique point in history where we are technologically, where I am tempted to never leave my apartment. Yeah, seriously. I don't want to leave my apartment more than I have to. I don't want to go out and eat and sit at a restaurant and have to drive on government roads and park on a government street and risk having my car towed for God knows what, or being mugged or having to pay a parking ticket even for something that's not, I'm mean, you know, living in the district of Columbia, do you know how many parking tickets I've gotten that were total bullshit? I don't want to fly anymore because I got to get groped or irradiated in order to get on a fucking airplane. I don't want to drive anywhere because of the liability of using government roads. I don't want to go out, and I hate to say it like this, I don't want to go out and face my fellow Americans in the state that we're in today, in this disgusting mentality of turning to government despite its failures. This is the last gasp of the public under the strangulation of government where we turn To our abusers, we turn to government like victims of Stockholm Syndrome here. We are turning to our captors as if the authority in government is the only thing that we have to improve society. That we have come to this point of desperation makes me quite uncomfortable to say the least. And I don't know what the answer is. 
I wish I did. I wish I could tell you, hey, this is what we're going to do as a movement. This is how we're going to band together. This is how we're going to overcome statism. But all I can do is preach. All I can do is share my message, tell you to be prepared, hope to keep you informed, at least slightly informed and moderately entertained with the Adam vs. the Man podcast. But fuck, man, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Be prepared. The old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And I've got my MREs. And and when it comes down to the collapse, you know, I've got my guns. I've got my silver. I don't think it's going to last a long time. I'm, I'm very optimistic at that point. I just, I, I hope that, I almost hope that this failure happens as quickly as possible and we can get past it. I mean, this is like, to use the old libertarian analogy, heroin for a toothache. You know, do you, do you, do you take the guy as a friend who says, yeah, just take some more heroin. It'll be great. Your teeth will be fine. Doesn't that feel good? Or the dentist that tells you, this is the solution. All you got to do is, is keep taking this heroin every day, you know, and your teeth will feel just fine. You'll forget all about them. And then you have someone like Ron Paul running for president, who's the dentist that says, <laughs> who the fuck were you seeing before me that told you to take heroin for your toothache? You fucking kidding me? All right, look, your teeth are so bad. You need a root canal. You need, a, you need bridges. You need all this operation. We're going to, you know, you've got gingivitis. It's, it's rampant. And, uh, but, it, but in order to have this operation... You, you need to get off the heroin so that we can give you some painkillers and we can, we can, we can do this. Uh, we can transition away from this. We can, we can fix your teeth. We can get you to a healthy state. And the patient says, no, I'm going to keep taking my heroin. Fuck that. That's, what we're, that's where we are right now. That's, that's America in the face of the Ron Paul candidacy. That's America in the face of the truth, turning to the quick fix, turning to the heroin of government to absolve us of the pain that we are experiencing with statism. And what happens? You know what? I, if, if I had to put money on it, if Ron Paul doesn't win the nomination, I'll bet Obama gets reelected. That's another shot of heroin. But I'd almost rather the patient not try to ease his way off the heroin. I'd almost rather the patient said, yeah, it's hurting worse. Shoot me up more. Give me more of that juice. And let's have it happen faster. Let's get past this. Let's have the breakdown. Let's, let's get past it. Because it's not going to happen until the American people are grabbed by the collar and, and shaken awake by the cold hard reality that government is force and violence and will never serve to imp improve humanity compared to the ideal of a voluntary society where free exchange is how humans get along with full f love, faith, and respect for each other rather than taking all of these sick impulses and desires to control and manipulate and absolve ourselves of our individual responsibility and institutionalize them in the violent institution known as government. I think that's all we can do. But we can spread the message. We can speak to the remnant. We can preach liberty. And I hope that everybody listening today will be part of a new generation of leaders in this country after the collapse happens. After the collapse of the dollar, the economy, the psychological framework of, the, of d the denial of the American people. When the people come looking for answers, I hope that you as a listener of this podcast, as someone who appreciates this message, as someone who understands what's going on, will be ready not just to survive what happens, but to take charge afterwards. To get this country back on its feet. Not to restore the greatness of America. But to save the future for our children. To ensure that this message is not just a passing flight of fancy, but becomes the new paradigm for the world. That we stop carving out this moral exception for government where it's wrong to hit or steal or kill unless you work for the government. How fucking sick is this? I would hope that future generations would look back on this time and, and be able to laugh it off and think that we were doing this all just for their amusement. But no, the pain is real today. And we have a responsibility to our children, to future generations.
I don't want to say you have a responsibility. We have a choice. We have a choice as to whether or not we want to change the paradigm or allow America to continue to wallow in this fetid, putrid swamp of statism till eternity. But I don't think it's going to happen. I'm much more optimistic. And I know that you listening to this right now, if you're still listening, will make the right choice. Choose to stay informed, choose to be ready, and to be a leader for the next generation.